Here's the Music One SE song card. You can create new song cards and type in the information by clicking the New button at the bottom of the screen. In most cases, though, you'll be importing library data directly onto song cards from the comma-separated file that you have exported from some other software, such as MediaMonkey. The data on the card that we're looking at here was imported from a Live365.com station. Music One has a built-in function to import data directly from the locker system at Live365. The title, the Artist One field, the cart, the length, and the album title fields are all imported from MP3 tags. These other fields you'll need to click in manually if you want to. You don't necessarily need the data that's in every field. POS is where you enter chart position where a song peaked on the airplay charts. Some guys like to keep up with that. The date is for the year the song was a hit. Intro and outro are talk over time. If you have live announcers some of the time and you want to print a music log for them, then these fields could be printed on the paper and it would tell the announcers how much talk time they've got going into and out of each song. You'll see the total number of times that a song has been scheduled since you first added it to your library and the last date and hour where the song was scheduled. MP3 and other audio files don't have metadata fields for tagging of gender or tempo, so you have to click those in yourself. You can mass apply the genders through your artist table within Music One, and you can also use the mass change function to apply tempos to a lot of songs at once. Sound codes are user-defined. There's another video where I talk about how to use sound codes. The cart field is very, very important. This is what goes into the playlist file that Music One makes for your automation system. This is what your automation system needs to find the audio file and play it. Professional automation systems usually have a six or an eight digit track number in this field. Most webcasting systems use the full drive path file name. Like I said, this song is from Live365's locker, so it has the file name that was imported from the Live365 locker. Now the file field is for Music One's own internal auditioning player. Click the play button and you'll hear the song. In many cases, the file field data will be exactly the same as what you have in the cart field. But if you have Music One on one machine and your automation and streaming system on another computer, you may have copies of the audio files in different folders on each of the two machines. So these two fields would not be the same. Or you might not have the audio files on the computer where you use Music One to do your scheduling. In that case, the file field could be left empty. Album and genre are imported from MP3 tags. If that data is not available in your library export, if you don't have them on your MP3 tags and the metadata, then the fields will be empty and you can type the info in later if you want. The notes field is just for your own uses. On the history tab, Music One will keep a running tally that will tell you each category the song has been in, when you moved it into the category, and the total number of times the song played from within that category. The Rotation tab is a grid that shows you every hour where a song has been scheduled over a two-week span of time. There are a few options here. If you use the drop-down style box, you'll see you can get a grid that will show you info about just this one song, or where all songs by this artist have been scheduled, where other songs by both artists have been scheduled, and a few other options.